so welcome everybody um thanks thanks kim thanks chris um really excited to be here so my talk is going to talk about uh the kubernetes ingress nginx controller and how to get started with security so here's a little bit about me um i'm a technical marketing manager at gitlab i've I, in the past i contributed a lot to the ingress nginx controller and a few activities that I enjoy doing during this quarantine are uh, cooking, I'm watching some Netflix, and I'm taking my dog on a lot of walks. So that's just kind of like a little intro about me. Um, so to get started, um, I set up a demo project. Let me see if I can type the link um, in the chat. Um, hold on, I'll stop sharing for a second so I can type the link so, so y'all can follow along. So that project will contain um, links to how to set up certain uh, security components within Ingress. So you can follow along at your own time and take a look and, um, you know, after, the, after this whole talk. So what are we gonna go over today? So I'm gonna provide the basics on Ingress. I'm gonna go over how to set up the Ingress controller and then I'm going to go up, go over a series of demos that show how to set up different types of authentication, the web application firewall, which runs off of mod security. And I'm going to go over rate limiting and other settings, as well as troubleshooting the ingress controller. So first of all, what is ingress? So ingress is the entrance to an application. So it's how all the traffic actually gets into your cluster and actually uh, communicates with the application. So uh, there's a couple components that you need set up. So you need a service, an ingress resource, your actual application being deployed, and an ingress controller running. And this whole talk will center around the Nginx ingress controller. So here's more of an overview of it. So traffic comes in, hits the load balancer, hits the ingress controller, which has an ingress resource in it which goes ahead and distributes that traffic to different services. And the services therefore uh, communicate to the pods, which are your actual application. And there you receive uh, the output from, from the uh, actual application. So let me show you a little bit about how that works. So in the demo project, I have uh, a deployment to so an application that runs on port 8080 within the actual pod and then you can see it just runs a simple echo server so let's go ahead and apply that oops so let's apply the deployment So now you can see we have a deployment running. So now we're gonna go ahead and apply a service. So our service um, communicates, uh, targets port 8080 from incoming traffic from port um, 80. So let's apply that. And now let's apply, now let's take a look at the actual ingress controller, or the ingress resource, I mean. So here you can see that, the, that it goes to the host meow.com and it talks to, it communicates to the meow service using the service port 80. And the path will just be a slash. So let's go ahead and apply that. So now you can see that we have the ingress controller created, the service created, and the actual deployment created. So if you see the instructions on in the repository I provided, you can go ahead and find the public IP. So we're so we're going to go ahead and export it.
and now when we actually pass the host and curl, we should we should get the echo container output. So there you see that now we're communicating to the actual application via the ingress and services. And just to show you how it looks, now that I exec into the container and cat the nginx config, you can see that the the meow.com server was made. And from here it points to the service, to the ingress, and there's a whole bunch of network configurations seen there. And you can just cat the whole file once you get a chance. And then um, you can see all the network rules that are set up. There's many different annotations and config maps, which I'll go over. So now going back to the presentation. So what exactly is the ingress controller? So what it does is it monitors all the ingress resources and then builds different rules based off of the ingress resources. So it'll build the, in this case, it'll build the nginx.conf based off of all the resources that it finds. So it'll start appending and adding new paths to the nginx.conf. Um, and that way it'll set up all the different network rules um, to point to the different services and the different applications. So there's a couple ways of deploying it. You can use Helm, uh, you can use the native deployment files. You can, um, with GitLab, the way that I have it set up is I just deployed it onto my cluster using uh, managed apps, which is just a way to just uh, deploy applications via Helm by just clicking a button. So um, there's a couple ways there. So these are links, you can go ahead and um, if you go into the repository, you can download the presentation and then you can click on the links from there if you wanna get more information. And annotations, what they do is they apply the specific conf configuration just to the set of rules. So if in my ingress resource, I apply an annotation and the host is meow.com, it'll only apply it to meow.com, to that particular ingress resource, um, where a configuration map deploys it to the, whole, to the ingress controller as a whole. So those are the two options that you have for configuring the Nginx controller and the different rules. So now let's get into security. So the first security feature that the Nginx Ingress controller has is basic authentication, which is pretty much using a username and password in order to communicate with the application. So now let's go ahead and, and see how that works. So coming back to the repository, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a username and a password. And from there, we're gonna create a secret that contains that username and password. So if we do PCTL get secret, um, basic off. So we can see that there is the base64 encoded um, username and password. So now, I'm going to apply, uh, so the regular ingress resource is already applied, but now when I send the request, we should get a 401, uh, which we didn't. Let's see. Oh, okay, that's because I didn't apply, the, I, need, I do need to apply this ingress resource that has the basic auth annotation. So this ingress resource has, the um, has the basic auth annotation, which configures, which goes ahead and configures uh, basic authentication. So now if I try to send a curl request, I should get a 401 unauthorized. But if I send the curl request passing my credentials, I'll be able to get to the application. So that, that's a demo of basic authentication. Now next, we'll go over external authentication. So external authentication allows you to use external an, an external application for authentication. So it's compatible with OAuth. Um, and I'm going to show you I'm going to show you a quick way of getting that set up. So it works. In, in my example, it works pretty much the same as Basic Auth, but it's using a, a third-party component to support the authentication. So if we 
apply the external auth configuration. So let me show you what that looks like. So you can see that we point to HTTP, HTTP bin, which if you look accepts a username and password. So it's using this for authentication and the username and password is already set up. This is just a trial from HTTP bin. So what you can see is now if I do, if I just sent a regular curl, it should get a 401 unauthorized, but if I actually send the, the needed username and password, I should be able to access the application. And that's using external auth with HTTP bin. Now moving on to the next uh, security feature is mutual authentication. So mutual authentication, also known as client certificate authentication, allows the client to verify against the CA and it also uh, allows the server to verify against the CA. If, and if both verifications pass, then, then you can validate identity. So this is kind of a little overview. Um, I wrote a blog about this a while ago on Medium. I'll be happy to share it with y'all. Um, so pretty much what happens is the server uh, requests a protected, uh, the client requests a protected resource from the server and it's presented to the server cert and it verifies it against the CA and the, the server verifies the client cert against the CA. And if, if they both are validated, then you're able to access the protected resource. And this, this is usually used for different uh, automated um, client server communication where, where the server is constantly communicating with a client and, and requires that level of security. It's usually not done by a human interaction. So now uh, let me go ahead and show you how that exactly works. So I have a little script, which is going to generate the certificates and sign them with the CA. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a secret that contains uh, all the certificates. And I'm going to apply that. Now, when I send a request to meow.com, it should fail. So I did add meow to my Etsy host just to make things easier. So you can see that it's failed because no SSL certificate was spent. So, so that enabled mutual authentication within, within the ingress. Um, so let me just show you what that looks like. So you can see that we created the auth TLS secret within the certificates and we, we created the auth TLS verify client set to on. Now, when I send the request with my client certificate and client key that was signed by the CA, I'm able to access the application. So now let's go over another security feature, which is the web application firewall. So uh, the Kubernetes ingress controller provides a module for the mod security web application firewall. And what this firewall does is it monitors logs and limits access to a bunch of different traffic coming into, into the ingress. So it, it pretty much looks at all the traffic that's coming into the ingress controller and you set different rules on how to act whether it be just logging and, and you know, checking if there's any malicious intent, like a scanner running, whether it could be blocking, it can actually block certain requests from coming in. Um, and it can just limit access depending on certain, certain rules. And it also uses the OWASP core rule set, which is a defined set of rules that are tailored by OWASP to prevent things like SQL injection or cross-site scripting and lots of others that it's, it's a really good tool set and it has different um, severities that it can scan. So it has different protocols that it can use, where it could be like stage one, stage two, where there is, that are more restrictive from each other. So I would recommend everyone to go ahead and take a look at that. And let's, let me show you a little bit about how that works. So 
I'm going to apply the standard ingress controller without any rules. And this is already running mod security by default. And I'm going to go ahead and send a request. And I'm going to pretend I'm a user agent uh, absent, which is a, a scanner. And I'll send a couple requests. See, you can see everything seems normal. But since I have it in logging mode, now when I go ahead and take a look at the logs and I'm going to grep for absent, I'm going to see what the logs return. And you can see that it was logged that there was a user agent absent that tried to access it. And we should have some data, yeah, on the severity. Um, and there's a bunch of different scores and different things that came up from the OAuth score rule set uh, relevant to the, the threat, the potential threat. So there'll be more data on it. Um, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to parse through it. So there are custom parsers being created. Right now, uh, GitLab, we're working on creating a, a custom parser to better display this information. So it all depends on uh, writing your own parser for it since the data is just pushed into a, the, a config file within mod security uh, within the ingress controller pod. So another thing that you can do is rate limit. You can set up different configurations for rate limiting. And this is helpful for uh, preventing DDoS attacks and making sure that you're not, your system is not getting bombarded. This is just one of one of the many things that you can set up. You can do things like change um, um, different sizes of files that can be passed, different things like that. So you have to make sure that you uh, read uh, pretty much anything that you can tune in Nginx. You can tune in the Nginx ingress controller since it is based off of it. So this is just one of the many things that you can do. And it's good to uh, fine tune it and not just use it out of the box because it's not secure out of the box. Um, this is where I, yeah, where I'm, where I talk about the different settings. So um, all the other different aspects can be tuned and you can tune them globally per server or per location and location means like the path, like a uh, slash meow would be an example. Um, you know, if you have different paths, you should, you could tune the paths individually and from there go to server and global. And also another thing to notice is that you can use system CTL commands uh, as a, uh, as an init container, and you should actually tune the node itself um, to tune the kernel parameters. There's there's some good um, documentation on this, and I can uh, provide that to you after after this session. So another thing uh, that's helpful would be troubleshooting. So what are what are the few things that you should look at when there's something not working with ingress? So um, here are a couple here are a couple things. So there's there's of course, viewing the logs, looking at the configuration, seeing if it was set up correctly and if, if traffic is actually being routed based off the configuration. For applying uh, your deployments, your backends, uh, your ingress uh, resources. And uh, there's this plugin that was developed, uh, I think, uh, sometime last year that you can use through the crew library. So, um, you know, once this talk is over, I'll put more information about it and, and I'll put different links. But uh, Crew allows you to deploy different, uh, it's kind of like um, like an app store for Kubernetes. It allows you to deploy different services um, or, or different um, applications that help you with different aspects of Kubernetes. And uh, there's one for debugging the ingress controller. That's quite been quite helpful. And yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. I really hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'd be happy to take any questions. All right. Thank you, Fernando. Um, so please post your questions into the um, questions and answers box. Um, okay, we have one question that came in from Sergio Mendez. Um, Nginx Ingress is very popular. Um, why not choose something like Traffic or Envoy? So, so the reason, so they all have different use cases. The reason that, that we use Ingress Nginx is because it has a lot more uh, community support. So it is the most active Ingress controller and our old systems were based off of Nginx. So it was an easy transition, but um, there are many reasons to use uh, traffic over the Ingr Ingress Nginx controller. It just depends on the needs. Um, that would just be, there's so many different Ingress controllers out there. There's HA proxy, 
Uh, there's, yeah, there's traffic, like you mentioned, there's, you can use different service meshes. So it just really depends on your organization's needs. Uh, they, they all have different, uh, you know, usages, so. Okay, thanks. Are there any other questions? Um, so you mentioned crew and you mentioned a debugging utility. So I, I have one uh, in the meantime. Uh, so you mentioned crew and the de debugging tool that you're using. What is that debugging tool? Um, could you maybe talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so so the debugging tool is the ingress. It, it's the ingress, but let me see if I can find it. Actually. So crew ingress. So here, so there's a plugin um, called uh, Ingress, it's just called Ingress Nginx, and it allows you to do uh, lint checks on all your different, so can you see my screen share? Uh, yes. Okay, perfect. So it allows you to do a bunch of different checks on your actual ingresses, so it'll sort of provide, it'll allow you to easily SSH into the pods, it'll provide lint to check like, it'll check errors like, oh, the, the ingress is not working, It'll check, oh, you didn't deploy a service or you deployed a service to the wrong port or you deployed something um, incorrectly. So there are lint checks and there's general checks of making it easier to find the Nginx config. And it just it's just a useful um, uh, debug utility. So you don't need to you know perform so many commands and check so many things. It, it points directly towards your Nginx. Uh, you can point directly towards your ingress controller. And then from there, just easily run commands. So, it'll, so this is an example, yeah, of how it's showing all the backends. And then from there, you can even make it parsable. You can check the certificates. Um, there, there's so much, yeah, there's some that could be its own little talk. And I'll, I'll give you, a, I'll provide you a, a couple resources on that. And what are the most common things you find when using this tool? Like that, that kind of went wrong or, or that were misconfigured? So... So yeah, commonly it's usually backend issues where uh, like the ports weren't set up correctly uh, and they're not communicating or uh, yeah, th those have been the main problems that I have found or problems with annotations not being set because when, when sometimes the information is disparse. So if you look at like a blog with older versions of Ingress, um, customers will tend to um, put different annotations that aren't compatible or they're not used. So sometimes you require to put three annotations at once, for example. So it's just usage is one, one of the main problems I've seen with customers. So they have just uh, incorrect usage or they're not formatting things a certain way. So, so those are the common errors that I find most of the time. Okay. And we have another um, question here from Dan Wilson. Um, and is, and he says, in my experience, some ingress controllers don't handle a high amount of ingress object updates without dropping requests doing, uh, going through the data path. Have you experienced that issue? And if so, how did you handle it? Um, also, he says uh, endpoints, uh, services, pods, updates, and, and Kubernetes. Um, so, so yeah, so that's that's very true. When there's a lot of traffic hitting hitting, um, when there's a lot of traffic hitting the Nginx ingress controller does tend to drop connections. That is, that is a thing I have experienced. And it, the way to solve that is through actually tuning the node and the, the kernel uh, uh, modules within the node. Uh, there's a whole guide on that. So that way it can accept more connections. And there are annotations that you can add to, to configure this as well. So I, there, there was a whole write-up on this a while ago. I'd be really happy to provide this after the talk and, and see if see I can look through my notes. But it, it involves two things, uh, configuring annotations to allow more connections and, and a higher bandwidth of connections, and then configuring the kernel parameters as well. So those are the two things. And then there, there'll be times when, when you create an ingress resource, the Nginx does, does need to re, recreate the file. So there will be some delays in doing that as well.